identification with a world first port scanner watertight pro, which is the result of our research and our commitment for excellence. I would like to introduce myself. I am Leia Lukmayan, the Deputy Head of Global Distribution at Coltraco Ultrasonics, and I am joined by my colleagues, Daniel Dobrowolski, a senior physicist, and Mr. Angus Hodgkiss, the manager of RDDE. If you have any Hi questions there. during the presentation, please do send on Teams chat and we will be covering it after the presentation. To begin, let me discuss a little bit about the Coltraco Ultrasonics. Just hold on, I'm moving it to the next slide. So who we are today? I'm Daniel, I think the slide is loading. Okay. Can you help? Sure. There we go. All right. So just a little bit of an introduction about our company, Coltraco Ultrasonics. So who we are today, headquartered in London, we operate across a diverse array of 25 market sectors in 120 countries with distributors in 80 countries. We are now an organization comprises of our company, Coltraco Ultrasonics, our laboratory co-located with a Center for Advanced Instrumentation part of the Department of Physics at Durham University, our research organization, the Durham Institute of Research, Development and Invention, and our Center for Underwater Acoustic Analysis. We are science-led and we have a unique research environment where we identify and nurture brilliant minds. At DERDI, our institute, we undertake fundamental research into the physical laws of the universe alongside applied research in physics, mathematics, engineering, and computer science in acoustics, electromagnetism, and information engineering. It is our research and manufacturing excellence and our enduring commitment to the through life sustainment of our technologies by aerospace standards of maintenance, repair, overhaul, calibration, and certification. So without further ado, I would like to pass it on to my colleagues, Daniel and Angus, who will be discussing in further detail about how the Port Scanner Watertight Pro work. Over to you, Daniel and Angus. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Leah. So uh, I'll just advance the slide now. Um, I'm gonna talk uh, firstly for a little bit about um, the Port Scan Watertight Pro, introduce you to the instrument, um, talk about what it does and um, some of the science behind it, and also about how to use it. And then I think Angus will move on to a few case studies um, and talk more specifically about applications. So uh, the Port Scanner Watertight Pro, it's a unique world first, and there is nothing comparable globally. It identifies the exact location of any leak sites present in a structure. It measures the physical cross-sectional size of any such leaks, and it calculates the flow rate of water through each leak under a user-specified pressure head. So the first of those things, uh, identifying uh, leak locations, that's something that's a pre-existing capability. Um, it's something we've we've done for many years in, the, in our ordinary port scanner watertight. Uh, but the, the next two are new to this instrument. So firstly, uh, actually finding out what the size of a leak is, that's something that's a little bit more uh, complex to do. Um, and it's an, in, an innovation as far as ultrasound is con concerned. It's the first time anybody's been able to do this effectively using ultrasound. And then finally, uh, calculating the, the water flow rate. That's never been done in this setting before in the way that we're doing it. Um, there, there is no such thing as, as using an ultrasound um, instrument to calculate uh, water flow rate. Um, on board ships and um, and offshore marine structures until um, until today, uh, really, or until this year when we released this instrument. Um, so here is a, a basic um, video about how the um, Port Scan Watertight Pro works. You can see that the wand is scanning a surface. Um, there's a generator behind that surface and the ultrasound uh, gets through where there is a leakage point. And at that point, there is a visual indicator on the touchscreen of the receiver unit there. And there's also an audible uh, indicator by the headphones. Uh, so the 
the physical principle behind this is that ultrasonic waves of, of the frequency that we use at 40 kilohertz, they don't substantially pass through a solid material, but they do pass through any gap in that material, even as a gap as small as 0 0.06 millimeters in, um, in diameter. So um, even very, very tiny leaks, very, very tiny points where air or water could get through. Ultrasound will get through those, uh, but it won't get through um, a solid interface. So um, a little bit more about how it works. So the receiver uh, measures the sound wave that emerges from a leak once it's been detected, and then it analyzes that information about the physical in interaction between sound and structure. So ultrasound is uh, just a very high frequency sound wave. That means uh, it's a vibration that passes through the air. And then when it comes into contact with an interface, um, some of it is absorbed by that interface, some of it is reflected. If it's traveling through a leak, it will be reflected off of the edges of that leak in a certain way, uh, depending on the structure of that leak. Uh, it will also exhibit something called diffraction, where the uh, wave spreads out at different leak sizes. And um, as it passes through the air, it exhibits something called geometric spreading um, and also attenuation as the air molecules absorb the energy of that sound. So all of these uh, phenomena which um, which happen to sound, those uh, happen in, in a very unique way from leak to leak. And it's that um, process that we analysed in our laboratory um, and were able to come up with some relationship from that uh, that enabled us to quantify the size of the leaks in that way. So our laboratory, which is co-located with uh, Durham University Centre for Advanced Instrumentation, um, at this laboratory, we investigated the data carried by sound waves after interactions with a wide range of leaks. And then we were able to deduce the uh, cross-sectional area of those leaks by processing those signals um, in the particular way that we did. Once we'd done that, um, we then uh, gave that over to, to the National Physical Laboratory and they were able to independently verify our results. Uh, once you have the information about the cross-sectional area of a leak, which is uh, automatically calculated using the instrument, um, you can then get the volumetric flow rate using advanced fluid dynamics principles. And that relies on not just the area, but also the thickness of the material that you're looking at. Um, for example, a watertight door might be so thick or a rubber seal might be um, five, 10 millimeters thick, whatever it is, uh, but also the roughness of the material and the pressure. And all of these um, uh, parameters are things that you can input into the instrument itself. So. Um, roughness is uh, something that it relates to the quality of the material and the pressure can be input in terms of uh, meters head, feet of head or indeed in bar or PSI depending on which you prefer. This is the interface of the Porter Scanner Watertight Pro. It is a seven inch touchscreen interface and you can input a lot of information about what you're testing. So here we have a list of structures that you might test. So you've got a door, a hatch cover. It's very easy to add new structures into the instrument. You just press this button here, if you can see my cursor, the button, uh, the third button down. And once you've input all of the information of, of what you're testing, then uh, you are introduced to this screen. Now this is a hatch cover where there's, you can see on the right, there's a diagram of that hatch cover. For other things such as multi-cable transits or bulkheads or watertight doors or whatever it may be, you can actually take a photograph of that and that photo will show where this drawing is here. Therefore, you've, you've taken a photo, you can actually see what that structure looks like. Uh, you can even complement your test with visual inspection, so you might see some deformation there. But even if you don't see deformation, you can mark those leaks on the structure. Obviously, a, um, a hatch cover is, is too big to take a photograph of, um, so that's why there's a, there's a diagram here. Uh, but uh, the process, once you've got to this screen, um, involves placing the generator on one side of the structure and using the receiver wand to locate those leaks by waving it around and doing a thorough scan 
of the of the surface. Once you've identified a leak, you mark it on the diagram simply by touching on the screen and then you perform a measurement. That just involves holding the wand steady at that point, making sure you found the maximum signal using the red bar graph on the left and uh, waiting for that unit to take an average of about 250 different read readings uh, and then display a result. So once you've located all of the leaks and taken the first measurement, you then get through to this screen and um, you can see at the bottom here for this hatch cover, there's the measure OHV. Now that's the open hatch value uh, and that's important so that you know for hatch covers what the percentage of your uh, reading is compared to the open hatch reading. Even for other um, structures such as water type doors, you need to take that open, what we call open air value rather than open hatch value, um, in order to compare the incident ultrasound to the amount that's getting through, because it's only then that you can quantify what the effect the leak has on that ultrasound and therefore what the size of that leak is and the flow rate associated with it. Uh, so once you've performed that step, you can see on the left side of the screen here, the leak area has been automatically quantified. This is in metric, so it's um, 7.4 square millimeters, the selected leak here in green. Uh, there's also an associated flow rate uh, in cubic meters per hour, um, the OHV percentage and decibel level. And then on the right, you have the total flow rate. So that's when you add up all of the leaks that you've spotted in a structure, it will give a total flow rate for all of them. Once you're happy that you've detected all of the leaks and quantified them for the structure, you can just, uh, well, first of all, you can add comments. So anything that you've noticed during the testing procedure that isn't um, isn't quantifiable, maybe a more qualitative um, description, you might want to say that, um, for example, uh, you've spotted a loose screw somewhere or a, a loose panel in a, in a multi-cable transit, um, and then you might want to add that into the comments. But uh, once you've done all that, you press save, and then this test is then automatically saved to the instrument, um, which can and, and it can then be exported. This is what it looks like uh, when you've saved a number of tests to the instrument. And you can see here a number of rows corresponding to the different structures that have been tested, and they're all labeled according to the, 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 the name that has been input by the user. It can they can be filtered so you can look at only tests performed on a certain date or you can look at only tests performed on a, on a certain site. Uh, the site may be, for example, a the name of a ship or vessel. Um, and you can also filter by room and structure as well. Um, so you may want to do your tests on certain compartments um, at a certain time and then move on to other compartments later. All of this data uh, can be exported um, either in a CSV file, uh, which is a relatively uh, simple way of doing it, or you can actually create a full report um, which produces a PDF report that is exported from the instrument via USB and then can be saved to your uh, saved to a central computer. Here is an example of a um, of a report. Um, with the instrument. So this will be, as I say, automatically generated. There's nothing that the user does to create this themselves. First of all, in the report, you will have uh, the total ingress rate uh, for the room at the specified um, amount of pressure. To, to change this pressure, the user just needs to go into the settings. Uh, but here we've got four bar of pressure, which is quite a lot. That That's uh, 40.8 meters head. So that would correspond to roughly 41 meters of, of seawater above the leakage point, but that's actually the, um, the requirement um, according to uh, ISO 12216. Uh, that's a very, very high degree of water tightness, uh, but you can see here that some leaks were spotted and actually this nowhere, nowhere near meets the required uh, water tightness. Uh, under that pressure, you're going, to get, you're going to get 170 cubic meters per hour of water getting through, uh, which is which is quite a lot. So it doesn't it doesn't meet the requirement in, in this um, in this circumstance. So once you've got that um, overall um, 
page, uh, you move on to the next one and you see um, each individual structure that has been tested. So here we have hatch one and there is the diagram with all of the leaks marked and numbered and those uh, leaks are, correspond to the leak numbers here in the table and you can see the open hatch value associated with, e with each of those and the, the value as a percentage of the open hatch value, the cross-sectional area and the water ingress rate and those two final columns are totaled at the bottom. So you've got a very good indication of how many leaks there are, where they are and what are their relative um, uh, what is the the pro the risk associated with each one? So some some leaks may be tiny and they may not be worth worrying about, but some may be very significant, and obviously it's up to the operator to decide at what tolerance they are willing to accept. But um, our instrument can locate leaks as small as 0 0.06 millimeters in extent, and we've tested the quantification, um, and we found that as small as half a millimeter we can get a really accurate quant quantification on that. We haven't been able to test any smaller than that, but I would wager that um, e even smaller than that, you would get a pretty accurate result too. Um, so it's very, very, very precise and uh, it enables you to actually quantify that risk to assets and personnel. So that was a very quick walkthrough of how to use it. Uh, for more information, you can check out our um, YouTube channel, Cold Tracker Videos, uh, and there's a full instructional video about the Porter Scanner Water Type Pro there. Um, also, we have the operating instructions, which is the the, the most full comprehensive um, description of how to use the instrument and how to care for it. This is another example of, of the same thing. This is a second hatch. Again, leaks marked on it and uh, put into the table here all, all the data that you need. Finally, a few advantages of the Port Scanner Water Type Pro. Uh, as I say, it's very, very accurate, detects leaks as small as 0 0.06 millimeters. Uh, very, very practical to use, very lightweight, portable, handheld. Um, it's, it's water resistant, of course. Um, it works, as we shall see with, with Angus, on, on a number of different things, multi-cable transit, watertight compartment doors, hatch covers, um, and multiple parts of compartmentation. Uh, it enables you to locate, quantify, that's the crucial thing really, quantify leaks in terms of water flow rate and to record leaks by photographing the surface you're looking at and um, exporting the data associated with that. Uh, it's very, very easy to use, doesn't require too much training. We do offer training um, and um, um, enables you to risk, uh, identify um, leaks as early as possible without having to do a full pressure rate pressurization test or uh, but you can also do it when the when the vessel is in port or at sea. So now I'll pass over to Angus to talk a little bit more about uh, some case studies. Thank you very much Daniel and and Leah for the uh, introductions and Daniel for the uh, very comprehensive uh, description of the device there. Uh, I've noticed just uh, we've started to get a couple of questions in, so just keep popping those in the chat if you have them, guys, and we'll answer them at the end of the presentation. So uh, I'm just going to talk, and I think this was supposed to come up in a, you know, in a kind of bullet point at a time manner, but here, here we are. So I'm going to talk a bit about a few case studies now and uh, some of the reasons that water tightness on, you know, in, in marine or underwater environments is so important. Uh, so. To this day, sinking remains the number one cause for loss of ships at sea, uh, with fire being the number two. And this, for this reason, this is something that is really close to our hearts, as you know, we've been aiming for many years now to deliver what we what we call the safe site. So we want to help assess all different aspects of safety on ships at sea, and we want to make the, the environment as safe as possible. These vessels and their seals, they experience substantial dynamic stresses through the lifetime as they kind of, you know, as they move through the ocean. There's there's tides, there's currents, there's waves, there's all sorts of different things that will cause stress to all of these seals and move them around slightly, and they will degrade over time. So without proper attention to the watertight integrity of, for instance, multi multiple cable transit areas and watertight doors, the risk to crew, ship and cargo is dramatically increased. And uh, that's, that's, of course, something that we want to, you know, we want to minimise uh, as much as we possibly can. 
So this first example is one that I'm sure you will have all heard about and know about. And if not, well, then uh, I hope this is going to be something interesting for you. But in, in February 2013, the MMS, which is a shipping vessel, and at the time it was one of the biggest in, in the world, longest in the world, and uh, one of the largest capacities in the world, suffered uh, severe leakage due to failure, failure in the stern thruster. And this leakage, you know, water started flooding into, into the ship. And what was found through this leakage was that actually the multiple cable transit areas were not properly watertight. So in a sudden blast of, of pressure from the water, four of these cable penetrations blew, blew out, failed, and it led to massive water ingress into other areas of the ship. Shortly after this, the remaining three cable transits also failed and we we saw you know even further increases in the rate of ingress out of out of this area into other areas of the ship as a result of this there was approximately four, 45 million us dollars in damages done to that ship and uh, very nearly the, the complete loss of the vessel so obviously you know this is this is a huge cost to to uh, to the to the vessel and a huge risk to the people on board that vessel you know they they very nearly went down with that ship and, and could have could have lost their lives unfortunately in this instance uh, they were able to they were able to you know patch things up and and save the ship and save the crew so moving on to the next example do i have control of these slides i do yeah i should yeah so for Black Ultrasonics, we've worked closely with the Royal Navy and their subcontractors for over 10 years and our portal scanner equipment uh, up until now it's been our port scanner 2 has been used across the across the Royal Naval fleet to to monitor the multiple cable transits to watertight doors uh, not so much the hatch covers because these are not cargo vessels but uh, they've been, these these have been used across uh, you know the whole the whole fleet of of naval vessels in the Royal Navy for over a decade now so we when it comes to leak detection and, and damage control, we know what we're talking about here and we know what we're doing. Uh, it's used for, as I say, the regular inspection of the watertight doors, the multiple, multiple cable transit areas, and it's used to make sure that all of these areas that should be sealed are completely sealed as they should be. Uh, and through this work, though, we have received requests from the Navy multiple times on different occasions to provide, to kind of push what we can do further to the next level to, to come up with better ways of analysing what we see, what we detect, and 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 report this and record this, which, uh, as you've probably gathered from from Daniel's um, from Daniel's first first part of this of this talk, that's culminated in the port scanner watertight pro, which takes that technology that we already had in the port scanner watertight two, uh, being able to detect leaks and locate them very precisely, to being able to analyze the signals that we get through those and tell you more detail than you've ever been able to access before about each individual leak and about the state of your enclosure as a whole. And also it provides levels of traceability that I, I don't think you can find anywhere else. And I have just lost uh, the whole presentation. <laughs> uh, there we go. Right, we're, we're back now. Um, yeah, the, I don't. Uh, I think this doesn't exist anywhere else where you can get these automatically PDF, uh, automatically generated PDF reports with all of your test records on there without having to, you know, do a thing other than uh, tap a couple of uh, a couple of things on a, on a touch screen. And what we've what we found from this with our work with the Navy is discovering the the presence and location of leaks in a bucket is useful, but the real critical information is is how uh, how significant is that leak how how much is how much of a concern is that leak what level of water ingress would that leak result in if left un un untouched and that's that's what we are that's what we're trying to shed some light on with the port scanner water type pro um daniel could i please have the next slide i've lost it the ability to change slides <laughs> thank you um so uh, the final example i'm going to give today is in july of 2020 there was uh, an incident that, again, I'm sure many of you have heard about, a very tragic incident where, unfortunately, uh, one of a fleet of the US Marine Corps amphibious assault vehicles sank and it led to the loss of nine lives, unfortunately. And this was, you know, this was a, a, a really big, really tragic thing that happened very recently. And it was caused in part due to, I mean, there was a number of reasons, but it was caused in part due to insufficient watertight integrity in that vehicle. 
these these vehicles they they're equipped with very capable bilge pumps these pumps can pump out hundreds of liters of water per minute but they still couldn't keep up with the rate at which water was ingressing into that vehicle and that means that what we had here was really really significant leakage that was undetected now at the time there was no they had no way of they had no way of checking these vehicles other than to submerge them and to see what kind of water was ingressed, what, what kind of water was getting in. And, uh, and as we see, those tests either weren't done properly or were not representative of, of real use or for whatever reason, this didn't, this, this, these leaks did not show up. And uh, when it came down to it, they weren't able to, they weren't able to get rid of that water as quickly as it was coming in and it led to the vessel sinking. Uh, on top of all this, this incident led to the permanent grounding of the entire AAV fleet, and uh, and also to the le led the U.S. Marine Corps to replace all of their AAVs with a new fleet of amphibious combat vehicles or ACVs, which the, the program to develop and build these new vehicles cost approximately four billion dollars, or even even more according to some sources, uh, which is of course a huge amount of money. So it's the you know it's the loss of life, and then a huge a huge cost to the 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 Marine Corps and to the country, you know, with taxpayers. So, and I can't say much about this um, at the moment, but we are also, we've been doing some work with some subcontractors for the, for the Marine Corps uh, to test the water type pro with some of these new vehicles to help ensure that no incident like this ever occurs again, and that we can help deliver a safer environment for these Marines uh, in, the, in these amphibious vehicles. So next slide, please, Daniel. Thank you. Uh, so just to, to wrap up, the Port Scanner Water Type Pro has, has been developed by Coltraco not only to uh, in detect and indicate and locate leak sites, but to convert that into the really key information and show you how these would impact safety and the safety and survivability risk and also for damage control uh, in, in naval environments. And the well, ultrasonic, leak ultra ultrasonic leak testing like this is, is recommended in a number of different regulations about watertight integrity. Uh, pretty, you know, pretty much all of them will, re will recommend some kind of a visual inspection and uh, ultrasonic testing. So uh, you can use the onboard camera. So I have a unit with me here. This is a, a development unit, but we have just a small eight, megap eight megapixel camera on the rear of the unit, as Daniel suggested earlier, indicated earlier. Uh, and you can use that to take a photograph of the leak of the structure that you're testing and then tap on that photograph wherever you find a leak and that will be saved alongside any records you keep any data you save uh, with all of those leaks marked so you can come back to that later and see exactly where your issues are uh, our advanced quantification algorithms that we have had independently verified by the national physical laboratory here in the uk provide precise quanti quantification of the physical leak size that's in in the cross-sectional area, and we we model the leak as a, as a as a circular leak passing through the structure, but we found this to be broadly accurate for different shapes and sizes of leaks as well in our testing. And we can also we can go a step further here, and we can predict the water ingress rates use it through individual leaks and for the entire enclosure. So as as you saw, we have that table of data where it will give you each individual leak's uh, size and uh, predicted flow rate through that leak, and then a total equivalent leak area and a total flow rate for a given room or, or site or area and uh, that that water flow rate is based on whatever depth of water you choose to put into the device so there is a there's a an option in the settings if i i'm not sure how clear this is going to be but uh we see where is it you see this option in the settings for pressure and here it's in meters head so you just type in a depth of water that you want to, that your equipment has to be uh, good up to, and it will calculate the pressure at that depth of water. And Daniel, we've got it. There we go. Thank you. Uh, so all I have to say, the Pulse Scanner Water Type Pro is a completely uniquely quantification system. It's something that's never existed before. It has full reporting and exporting capability and employs sophisticated instrumentation that is exceedingly easy for anyone to use. And uh, I do urge you, if you you know if you if you are unsure about the procedure, to go and watch that video that Daniel mentioned earlier on our YouTube channel. Uh, and I think what we've seen as well, it's just a just a short amount of hands-on experience really uh, puts into perspective how how easy this can be to use. Uh, 
And finally, again, this is a world's first. You can detect, you can quantify, and, you, and sorry, you can detect and quantify leak sites and calculate the watering risk rates all in one handheld device. I mean, this, this, this is it. This is the whole thing. We have a generator here as well. This goes on the other side of the structure, but this is this is going to do all of that work for you, and it's going to give you all of that information, and uh, it's going to save that and allow you to export that and report them, print that out, and give that to whoever you need to give it to to, to carry out remedial work. So thank you very much and uh, thank you very much all, all of you for coming. That's that's the end. We have uh, maybe one slide at the end as a, a wrap up slide. But uh, as I say, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to pop them in the chat or if you'd like to, you can send us an email to support at coltraco.co.uk. That's S-U-P-P-O-R-T at coltraco.co.uk. And if you'd like a quote, then you can contact us at sales at coltraco.co.uk as well. Uh, just feel free to send us an email and we'll We'll be more than happy to help. Thank you. Leah, you're muted. Thank you, Angus and Daniel, for such an excellent presentation. Um, there are a few questions on Teams chat, and I will be reading out now. Um, the first one was from Mr. Alexi. So what is the difference with Port Scanner Watertight Pro and the Port Scanner Second? So I think the easiest way to, to explain this, uh, and I know you've just closed it down, Daniel, but uh, would be to go back to your first slide of the presentation, because I think that kind of highlights yeah. uh, the, the, the real key difference and the real key uh, new uh, features and benefits of this device. And while he does that, I will show you again the, the form factor of the device, and you'll see if you've if you've ever seen or, or handled the, the Watertight 2, you can see that this is is quite a different looking device. Which slide were you talking about, Angus? Your very your first slide, if you will. Oh, second yeah, slide. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, I, I'm happy to talk about this. So the, um, as I mentioned earlier, the the very first of these capabilities, the um, um, ability to identify the exact location of any leak sites present, that's really what you could do with the port scanner water site too. Um, you could identify them and you could get a qualitative understanding of of the extent of that leak uh, you would get it gives you it gives you a value um, and you can compare those values um, and it gives you a decibel reading as well so de decibel reading means that um, you can you know how much sound is getting through so that it is to some degree quantitative but um, and and, and don't get me wrong, it's very, very useful as a, as a solution and it has been useful for, for many, many customers. But if you're interested in the actual leakage rate of water or the physical extent of the leak, then that's where the Watertight Pro comes in. So it's able to um, calculate the cross-sectional size. That's basically the, the physical size of that leak. Um, but it's also able to calculate how much water is going to get through. So let's say, for example, um, you're, you've got a uh, a structure and you know that it needs to have uh, under a certain amount of water ingress getting uh, water ingress um, given a certain pressure you can input that pressure you can work out actually how much water is going to get through and then you can tell whether it passes that check or not equally you can look at a leak in a watertight door and you can um, uh, measure from the top from that leak to the top of the compartment and then that way you know if that compartment fills up with water, you know that there'll say there'll be say two meters of water above that leak. You can then that 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 is equivalent to two meters in terms of pressure head. Um, therefore, you can then work out how much water is going to flow out of that leak at that particular spot. So it's that quantitative quantitative um, nature of this instrument that makes it a step above any. Um, water tightness testing uh, for um, ultrasonic instrumentation we've had before. And it's certainly a hell of a lot better than visual inspection. Um, as well as that, of course, is it, you have the, re the reporting uh, feature integrated within the instrument. So not only do you, can you locate and quantify leaks, uh, they're, they're saved into the instrument and you can export these reports. So it's, it's more convenient than having to um, use an instrument, then take photos and then write, write down notes and then compile that all later. Um, this all does it all in one instrument. So hopefully it's a lot more user friendly and a lot quicker to use.
Fabulous. Um, there is a follow up question from Alexi. Um, can this device used uh, to detect the leaks from the valves? Uh, leaks from up, valves. Please. Yes, yeah. leaks from the valves. Valve. You elaborate on on those valves. What, uh, where 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 would those valves be? And importantly, would you have access to both sides of that valve, or is this valve in in a piping system or something like that? Yeah, um, Mr. Alexi, maybe you can clarify on the chat, or you can raise your hand and just turn on your audio, perhaps. Uh, yeah, good, uh, good day, everybody. If you listen to me, uh, my name is Alexi Hodlidza. I'm a maintenance reliability supervisor, so the Aramco. Uh, my question is: If valve closed and it is not secure, leaking, can this device identify leakage of the valve? Not a so, quantity. Okay, quantity will be nice, but actually, uh, uh, is it possible to detect leaks present or not? Uh, if valve fitted on uh, on on the pipes or somewhere. So my thank you for that that question. My answer to, uh, to that would be: it depends on the size um, of the pipe that you're testing, and it depends on whether or not you can uh, fit something in inside there. So if you you would need the generator to be either side uh, the, the opposite side of the valve um, so if, if it's a closed piping system then it probably isn't going to work but if you are able to fit a generator in there it's quite a small generator um, but of course depends on and depends on actually if you can fit that generator in there or not uh, if you can then yes but it's it's not it's, it's not designed for piping systems this instrument um, so it very much depends on whether you can access the interior of that piping system that is an application, though, that we that we're aware of, and it's uh, it's something that we are exploring as well. Though um, that's one for the one for the future, though. Yep. Um. I hope it clarifies your question, um, you. Mr. Alexi. Thank you. Yeah, and thank for the you. second, yeah. And for the second one, um, it's from Mr. Christopher. Um, the bulk are the bulkheads in cover in, uh, for fire insulation or sound insulation, especially foil back, does it, does it still work? The port scanner watertight pro for um, bulkheads covered in fire insulation and sound insulation, insulation. Um, so well, I'll start off answering this one. I think um, depends on, on how, um, uh, how how much airspace there is in in any installation um if i think if you if you've got um a f an amount of insulation and there's there are no leakage points within the insulation and it's affixed to the structure then the ultrasound isn't going to penetrate that so the answer would be no um if you can remove the insulation or if there are gaps in the insulation then the answer is yes i, d I don't think foil backs would be an issue uh, very thin materials you can uh, the ultrasound will pass through very and Foil is, of course, incredibly thin. So, yeah. Um. Thank you, Daniel and Angus. Um, Mr. Christopher, are you happy about it? All right. Um. Anyone else who would like to ask or who would like to, um, raise any questions? Um. Now is the best time since Angus and Daniel are very available to answer or direct your questions. So please feel free to send it over on Teams chat, or you can also raise your hand if you want to um, say it out loud. As I say, if you if anyone does uh, think of, you know think of any questions after after we've uh, after we've left yes. this call. You know, you you can always you can always contact us. And we're always gonna we're always gonna be happy to help as much as we can. So, uh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um. Anyway, as what Dan uh, Angus said, uh, you can send your um, further email uh, further questions on emails. Um, maybe you would like us to send you like pricing or product brochures or a copy of this recorded webinar. So we will send you all those details on uh, via email. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask us. Maybe we can send the email here, um, Angus, the one that you mentioned earlier, sales. You I'll can send it on Teams chat, the two emails as well. Yeah. So for technical questions, please yep. feel free to contact us here. This is uh, support at contract.co.uk. 
uh, this will find its way to, to one of us eventually and we'll uh, we will do our best to help you and uh, for questions about pricing and quotes then just sales at culture.co.uk is where is what you, yep. is what you do. so uh i mean it, it needs to be if you if you if you wanted to send if you had uh if you wanted to some some cost information yes. and also had a technical question you don't have to send each separate emails they'll all find their way to the right people eventually so yep um they're, they're, so i yeah, I think that would be all. And we, re uh, on behalf of Daniel and Angus and myself, I would like to thank everyone for joining us today on our webinar. And we are looking forward to see you all on our next. So thank you once again, and I hope you will have a good day ahead of you. Have a nice day. Take care.